UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. It is indeed UNESCO's Remote Radio Week, day five of five, and I'm Andy Levitt. Pleased to be here once again, and uh, we're about to kick off a very exciting masterclass uh, with Corrine Podger. Uh, just a reminder, though, this is in partnership with World Health Organization and UNESCO. And the aim is to have this particular week be an online training program aimed at building the capacity of local radio stations to produce accurate and professional radio content in the event of containment measures or emergencies, including financial difficulties. And of course, you can go find all of the discussions, the masterclasses, the videos that have been played during the course of the week, including today on remoteradioweek.org. As I said, masterclass time. Without further ado, Corinne Podger from the Digital Skills Academy. Over to you. Thanks so much, Andy. It's really lovely to be here. And um, Andy, can you give me a ping at about a minute before I need to drop out and I'll just zip, zip, zip through? Yeah, awesome, terrific, <laughs> thanks. Okay, so um, folks, I'm going to share my screen. So let's give that a go. It's also different to Zoom. I'm so used to Zoom. Chrome tab, <laughs> that one, that one, and then hopefully if I do slideshow, is that something working? is appearing? There we go. There's something on the screen. Yay. Yes. So good. <laughs> awesome. Okay, great. Well, listen, thanks so much for having me. Um, so this is what we're going to try and whip through in half an hour. What is social audio? I'm going to walk you through Clubhouse and Twitter spaces so that you've got the basics of how to use them. We'll talk a bit about some other tools. If you have a moment to download Clubhouse and Twitter space at Clubhouse and Twitter to your phone, um, then you can hold the phone in your hand and I can talk you through it. But of course, you can also watch the recording later and just go through it slowly. That being said, these apps get updated all the time. And in fact, this evening when I logged on, there had been some changes like, oh, I have to update my slides anyway. So they move quite quickly. Um, very briefly about me, I've been a journalist since 1992 and I've been training since 2013. And it is such a joy for me to be here with you guys today. So what is social audio? Well. It's audio first social media, basically. And I guess the, the sort of big ticket items in that shop are live conversation platforms like Clubhouse and Twitter Spaces, but also voice messaging and audiogram generators. And what do they offer is audience engagement. So instead of audio just zipping off to Mars after our beautiful radio programs, we get to capture some of it and make it look like something or be something that people can see on a phone and participate in. And it's a great way of promoting radio programming and podcasting. And in the concept of this conference about remote radio week, you can use these platforms to get audio from anywhere and share it everywhere. So it's really exciting. And particularly these things, the live conversation platforms, they're the sort of thing that you can use just on your phone from wherever you are. And I think they're really transforming what we think about when we think about conversations um, that people can take part in. So they're a bit like talkback radio, but also different. So Clubhouse has been around since last year. Uh, it launched on Android this year and it stopped being an invitation only platform in July. So just a few months ago. And then Twitter Spaces launched November last year on iOS. Android, it launched in April this year. And in October, so it's just a few weeks ago, it got rid of the requirement to have more than 600 followers before you could use it. So it's now available to everybody. Then there are others, of course, coming up. So uh, Facebook Live Audio was announced in June 2021, but it is still, um, I was advised by someone at Facebook in India this week, um, it's for people who are public figures or select Facebook groups, and it seems to be mostly US um, only. So just watch that space, but it's not really with us yet. And LinkedIn Live Audio um, announced in March 2021, but it doesn't seem to be available yet. 
So if you've got it, um, you know, join the, the after party with us later on Twitter Spaces um, and tell us your experiences. So, okay, so if you've had a chance to download Clubhouse to your phone, let's go through it. So if you open the app, the top of the app, the sort of landing page is, is called the foyer. And there's a search bar there. And then at the top, there's a little button on the top left, which is for explore. Then, then there's an envelope, which is still on the app, even though it's not invitation only. So you can kind of ignore that. Then there's a calendar. There's a little bell for notifications. And on the far right hand side, there's your profile. Then down the bottom on the right is a little, um, like a, I don't know, like a paper plane. Um, that's called back channel. And that's a way of messaging people within the app. And at any time, if you want to get back to the foyer, you'll find that there's a back button. So let's talk you through it. So the search bar allows you to type in a topic. So in the examples there on the screen, I typed in the word climate and it showed me clubs that I could join. Um, you can see there are tabs, people, clubs, rooms and events. So clubs are groups that meet regularly. Rooms are one-off conversations and events are scheduled rooms or scheduled club meetings. So that's what you get when you type into the search bar. Then the explore bar, uh, sorry, the explore tab, um, it allows you to search for people by names. You can also search using emoji in Clubhouse, which is kind of fun. And then below that, you'll see find conversations about, and there's a number of topics there. And if you were to tap on wellness, for example, that would then give you subtopics like health or medicine or fitness or nutrition and you can really dig into a very gr a granular level to find conversations that would be of interest to you. Um, once you find a topic um, and you find a club that looks like it might be worth joining, you just tap on it and then join it. Um, and you can leave clubs, join them, doesn't really matter. It's a very friendly platform or it aims to be very friendly. Um, the next item along is the calendar menu and it gives you two options. So there's upcoming for you, which will give you recommendations based on who you follow, clubs you've joined, and your interests. And we'll talk about interests later. You adjust it in settings. It'll also show you, if you tap on the down button there, it'll show you my events. So if you've scheduled any events, that's where they land. Um, and then there's a bell icon. So if you think I wouldn't mind learning about, these were just the ones that came up on my phone at the time, the daily Surya Yassin recitation. If you want to join that, you tap that little bell and you'll get a little notification when it's about to start. So notifications, these are rooms started by people you follow or updates of people who followed you. So that's literally what the bell's, uh, bell's icon does. And then the last one is your profile. Your profile can actually be quite long, um, like several paragraphs, and it can include emoji if you remember i said you can search for emoji on clubhouse so if you're a radio person you would put an emoji of the radio somewhere in your profile you can add your contact information and socials at the bottom and right at the very bottom of everyone's profile in clubhouse is a list of the clubs that they've joined and then on the top right of your profile is where you access settings so let's talk about settings it's the cogwheel in your profile um, it's where you can set things like your interests, but also your languages. You can turn on spatial audio, which is 3D audio. So clubs that are broadcasting in stereo will give you stereo sound. It's also where you can um, contact, find contact information for Clubhouse and also access the community guidelines. And I do recommend reading through those. Um, it's important to abide by the rules of the platform and that's where you find them. So if you wanted to start a room in Clubhouse, you go to the foyer and then at the very bottom, it just says start a room. And then if we work through these um, images here on the screen, um, you can choose between open rooms, which is open to anybody, a social room, which is open to people that you follow, um, or a closed room, which is a room with just people that you choose. Um, then you give it a title and you tap, let's go. Um, and as soon as you tap, let's go, the room is live. If you want to schedule a room, you tap the calendar icon. 
and then tap the plus button that comes up in the calendar icon and then you'll open up this thing I've put here social audio party so I filled in some details there um, I quite often do um, clubhouse sessions and Twitter spaces with a friend of mine called Anne Charles so you just write a little description um, and then you um, promote it you create it and off it goes um, and on the far right hand side there you add it to your calendar so that you don't forget as well because that's also quite helpful if you want to create a club anyone can create a club now seems to be um, for a long time you had to apply it was quite messy to apply for one but now you can just create one if you want so go back to your profile scroll all the way to the bottom do you remember I said all the clubs you're a member of appear there? At the far right hand side is a little grey box with a plus button in it and you just tap that and it'll um, allow you to create a new club. Now should you create a club? You don't have to, you can just run rooms to be honest. The thing that's nice about clubs is that they are searchable but if your club isn't uh, active very often it's a bit of a downer um, and really these things live outside of the platform as well you would need to be promoting these events on your other socials on your podcast on your radio show so to be honest it's really up to you you can start a club or just run rooms whenever you feel like it so let's go to twitter spaces what's this all about well twitter spaces is live audio conversations on twitter um, and the way you access them just to see what's going on in the world of spaces at the moment is to go to your Twitter account and in the middle um, of the bottom of your screen there are these four little circles and if you tap on that that will show you um, some of the Twitter spaces that are happening live right now. Um, once you open that space up as well you can see there I've got a um, on the image in the middle there's a big red arrow pointing at the little purple icon and if you tap on that icon that takes you to the community guidelines so that's how you can find out how to use Twitter spaces and what the latest rules are so how to start one go to your Twitter and you do a long press on the new tweet uh, icon and that will bring up this purple op, uh, purple icon there and if you tap on that it will allow you to then um, select your space or create your space really exciting um, just in the last couple of days recording a space has been opened up to everybody this is really interesting actually um, your recordings will live live on the platform sorry not live live they will live on the platform for 30 days apparently so you can download them um, you can go live straight away so start now or you can tap the little calendar icon just next to the start now and that will bring you up the opportunity to schedule a space. And again, once you've scheduled something, whether it's Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces, you should share it. Um, so you can copy the link and paste it anywhere um, and make sure that you're promoting it widely. So how do we record these things? Well, I would just give you the caveat that it's good to only record your conversations I think recording someone else's conversations is kind of not cool um, and if you are starting a an event or scheduling an event where you're going to be recording it just put the word REC rec in the title somewhere so that it's really clear to anyone who's joining that forum that it's being recorded so Twitter spaces just got super easy I updated this slide deck today because um, in-app recording has just launched. Clubhouse, um, in-app recording is expected or was expected last month but it's not, a, I haven't been able to see it in my app if you've got it great but up until then uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it. One is to screen record on your phone if you can do that um, using your iPhone or your Android. There is another alternative which is to use a platform called Club Deck which is not affiliated to Clubhouse um, but it does give you a desktop based interface which is pretty straightforward to use and it's got a really good uh, website that talks you through how to use everything. So you would log into Club Deck on your PC or your Mac, use a headset or desktop mic and there's the option to record and then download your recording. Just one little thing which I found out uh, kind of by accident is that if you log into Club Deck on a PC it will log you out of Clubhouse on your phone. So fun fact, just be aware. 
couple of other things, more features. Both of these platforms offer um, paid spaces, so you can start to think about uh, ticketed Twitter spaces or Clubhouse paid rooms. And if you want to follow the news on both of these platforms, Clubhouse has a blog um, and follow Twitter spaces on Twitter for all of the latest updates. And of course, Twitter also has a blog and it's um, kept up to date. They're releasing features all the time on both of these platforms. So they're both worth opening at least once a month to see what's going on. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is voice messaging and audiogram generators. And I'm going to whip through them quite quickly because I've got about four minutes. So voice messaging is audio from the audience. Um, both WhatsApp and Telegram will allow you to open the app and do a long press um, on the microphone and that will set off a recording. Um, so encouraging your audience to send you audio is great using these platforms. Similarly, Skype, I think we all forgot about Skype because of Zoom, but on Skype, on a phone, iPhone or Android, doesn't matter. If you tap those three little dots when you're on a phone call with somebody, um, you can start a recording. It will record video, obviously, um, but that doesn't matter. You just go to your desktop, download the MP4, drop it into something like Audacity, and it will just rip out the audio for you straight away, and you can use that in your next show or podcast. Audio genera audiogram generators. This is those tools that give you the little wavy line and the script on the screen. Um, there's a couple that um, are really great to try out. One is Headliner. The other one is Real. Um, they both offer a certain amount of free stuff. Um, Headliner gives you free, uh, th I think it's worth five videos per month and there's no watermark. But then if you go pro, it's a bit more expensive. Real is cheaper but you get two free um, videos per month and they're watermarked. So try both, see what you think. They do both offer um, transcription, which is brilliant, and captions and animated transcribed videos. So lots and lots of really cool things to try out there to give your audio greater reach on social. So that's pretty much the end of it from me. If you want to get in touch with me, um, honestly, the easiest way is to send me a direct message on Twitter. But that's my email address there and I do teach this stuff um, and would love to hear from you. So I'm just going to press stop sharing and go back to the StreamYard call. And I think I think I was pretty much on time. Two minutes to go. Do you have any questions, Andy? <laughs> I don't. I'm sitting here rather bewildered at the world of of opportunity when it comes to the audio space, but also just multimedia, how it's constantly evolving, constantly just surprising me. And I didn't realize that there were so many different kind of, of apps. And I believe that everyone watching was certainly, certainly sitting there with eyes wide open as well. So thank you very much, uh, Corinne. Uh, for for your insight and I think I have a question slash statement uh, rather that you know when there was this new disruptor called social media a lot of traditional media um, was kind of caught unawares and you know there was lots of conversation of oh wow is this the end of you know radio is this the end of television is this but it's interesting to see how so much of the social media space can quite very well coexist with traditional media. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, Phil, um, Philippe has just sent me a reminder that we have uh, 10 minutes to chat, which is epic. So there's so much to dig <laughs> into because I think, you know, when we talk about the, um, the tools, you know, that's the kind of the what, right? But now we can talk about some of the why, like why would you use this stuff? Mm. Um, you know, and I think, when we think about, you know, everyone's always on their phone, right? Like it doesn't matter where you go. I think if people have the means to acquire a phone, they will get one, um, you know, and we're spending a lot of our time on social platforms. They have visual mediums, you know. So, I mean, I find it really exciting because I was a radio journalist primarily for most of my career. Um, but there's no visual record of any of that stuff. And, you know, the thought that someone can, whether it's, okay, so it's maybe start a live conversation about a topic that's of interest to everybody today, you know, that's a really powerful tool. 
and because it's on a it's on a visual you know interface right like you can see with your eyes who's in the room and you can you know spot people that you know and say oh would you like to come up and, and grab the mic that's mind-blowing to be able to create a, a little audiogram and to do it so cheaply hmm. you know I mean, I'm a, an Adobe user and to create one of those things in, you know, Premiere or After Effects is just really yes. time consuming and horrible. Yes. <laughs> so the fact yes. that you can just drop an MP3 onto a desktop and it just, ta-da, it's like, get out. That's amazing, you know. But thinking about the why, I mean, you know, there was, there was a wonderful series of um, morning shows that a friend of mine in Fiji was doing all the way through the pandemic. Um, so her name is Livia Mavono, and I think she was one of the speakers during this week. Um, and she was running a daily conversation, checking in with people in Fiji about where things were up to with the COVID pandemic, you know. And that's that can be anybody, right? It's and and anybody can join that conversation and offer their feelings and you know share their impressions of what was going on because Fiji really got smashed with COVID, you know. Um, and that's a unique thing, I think, that a radio broadcast doesn't offer that because you can't just interact, you know. So I think that's a really exciting tool. Mm, mm, mm. No, fascinating. Mm. And I, I, I agree with you. I'm sitting here nodding profusely and umming away because I do relate to the Adobe struggle. <laughs> so it is, it is good to see that there are um you know other resources out there that can especially uh for you know lower income communities be a, a a form of them to also be able to join in or extend their uh presence in in the online space and i know that you do quite a lot of work with ngos uh, across the board so what are some of the insights that you can give particularly to um under-resourced uh, radio stations that have a good following on air and want to extend their reach across, you know, the social media space. What 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 are some of the learnings that you have that you can um, provide to to those that are watching and tuning in today? I would okay. So a couple of thoughts. First of all, I think you can try these things in sort of smaller forums, right? So. You know, Clubhouse, as you saw, will allow you to do just people that I choose, for instance. Um, you know, and you can and you can start a small sort of a Twitter space that it's a closed space. Um, so I would say, you know, try it out first of all, right? Um, but I I think giving something a go, but also allowing your audience to know that you're trying something new. Um, that to me is, I suppose, a, a good policy when you're trying out something that's unfamiliar not just to you but also to your audience and say why don't we go on this journey together a bit um, mm. and I think also you know these tools both the voice messaging apps and also the um, live conversation platforms allows you to get a very immediate sense from your community you know are we covering the topics that are interesting to you do you have a story that you want to share with us that don't involve bringing someone into the studio. Um, and, I, okay, of course you can get someone on a phone, but actually the, the audio quality that you will get in these apps is better. You know, it's using the microphone on the phone. So you're automatically, like, lifting the quality of the sound um, just by using one of these forums. Um, I'm not sure that that's necessarily answering your question. Um, I mean, you know, I'd, if there are folks on the on the masterclass today who are joining from sort of maybe an NGOE background or from a sort of crossover into development spaces um, to me these are so much more interesting than a seminar on zoom right <laughs> <laughs> you know I think um, almost all of us who've ever interviewed an expert um, know that kind of sinking feeling if you do it on a Zoom where they've got a PowerPoint presentation, you just think, oh, no, this is going to be dull. But then as soon as the presentation's over and you get into the Q&A part of the conversation, everyone comes to life, right? So in a way, you can kind of skip that bit and go straight into a conversation to say, great, so we've got so-and-so from, you know, the WHO on the call, we've got so-and-so from, um, you know, from Oxfam on the call, tell us what you see, tell us what's going on there and really get that immediacy, which, you know, that's gold on, on radio and, and podcasting. That's gold, you know? 
Mm. Mm. It is. It is the intimacy, you know, the connection. The radio is my friend, you know. The presenter becomes part and parcel of your of your life. Um, it is. Radio is is an amazing medium, and um, I think social media, as I as, as I said already, is that you know it's not something to fear. It's literally something that can be used as an extension of that trusted medium of, of of radio. And I know that there's a party happening on Twitter. You and Philippe have organized an after party <laughs> as a Twitter as a Twitter space. So I'm sure there'll be uh, more conversations and more insight, et cetera, et cetera, going on there. Right, Philippe, as you join yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> I'm joining because because I'm I was not supposed to join. So uh, but I'm joining because I I think there's 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 another thing I wanted to, to notice uh, on on everything you said, which is which is really interesting. For me, uh, there's a difference between Clubhouse and Twitter. We we are using a lot Clubhouse. I mean, I've been oh. doing sixty rooms of an hour, so it's it's a lot of of uh, <laughs> uh, of, of time going through uh, uh, Clubhouse. And why did we do that? We did that because yeah. we wanted to connect to our readers. Uh, because it's for podcasting and and we are having a community on podcasting in French and um, the that's that's a, a big issue with connecting to your to your listeners when you're radio station broadcasting not maybe in uh, in, in in countries like Africa but in in Europe uh, there's a big trouble with radio station they are not connected there's few radio stations that are still in France, for yeah. instance, or in, in, in different countries, you still have people talking outside of when they talk on the microphone. They talk uh, uh, on, on, on live on Twitter. They talk with the listeners and they know what they expect. Mm -hmm. And what I think is different between Clubhouse and Twitter, to, to come back to my, to my, to my thoughts, is Clubhouse uh, has some real person behind with real names because you were obliged at the beginning to be invited by someone and granted by someone. So you had to be uh, real, uh, not with a pseudo or, uh, or a nickname. <laughs> Where Twitter, we know that 40% of the account on Twitter are false, are here with AI to give uh, some false information, and we know it's true. We know it's the same on Facebook. So it can yeah. come. It can come on Clubhouse, but that's what I prefer compared to Twitter. I guess what I would say to that, Philippe, is there two, two things. One is it depends on where our audience is, right? And I, I you know, I think, uh, for example, on on Twitter Spaces, because. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, it's showing me the accounts that I, I know and follow. So I have, I feel confident that the people that I see who are starting a Twitter space are the people that they are. But more to the point, I guess it's, you know, it's a question of where our audience is. What platforms are they using? Like what I prefer is kind of irrelevant, really. If, if my audience is on X platform and I try and push them towards Y platform, that's going to be tricky. But I also think what will be really interesting you know, next year, um, well, okay, there's a little caveat there, but if Facebook rolls out live audio, <laughs> yeah, yeah um, <laughs> again, um, because they did it in 2016, do you remember? Facebook live audio. If you look, if you, if you do a Google search for Facebook live audio and then you just customise your search to 2016, they announced this five years ago, but they're doing it again. Yay. But if they roll that out... That's really exciting for Facebook groups, you know, for radio stations that yeah, have Facebook groups, pages. Yes. I agree. Yeah. yeah, you know. So, and then, yeah. I mean, LinkedIn is also, I mean, that will be interesting. I mean, po possibly, and it'll be very different demographics. Sorry, it's a long yeah. answer to you, to, or a long point, but I think it, it really depends on what the audience are using. Yeah. Great. Oh, I mean, I heard. I have heard, you know, live conversations on um, Telegram too. So, oh uh, yeah, well, everyone ah. is, is just yeah, <laughs> rushing into <laughs> the audio, social audio space. Goodness but it's day. interesting because you're 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 really listening to each other, which you were not doing. Uh, you, you're you're doing that less, even when you're watching it on each other. You 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 just have cool. that imagination that is that is not as rich as when you're uh, uh, listening to each other. Absolutely, yeah. 
Thank you very much, Corinne. Thank you, Andy. I let you finish your Thanks, conference Andy. because I was not supposed to be there. So <laughs> <laughs> you just dropped in yeah, unexpectedly. I just dropped in. No okay. problem whatsoever. I think actually it's more about you and Corinne right now. Just remind us once again where this after party is taking place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to uh, to to put the the link uh, because we are we we made a, a short link which uh, which uh, is is pretty simple. Pod wf slash rrw. Uh, so I will uh, display it right now, very fast. Hop, create banner. That's the good thing <laughs> here. You can go there, http uh, two points dash dash pod dot wf slash rrw, and it goes to the Twitter spaces in, well, a little 50 minutes. We can uh, we can share together if you want to go to, uh, uh, to uh, yeah, come up on stage uh, with Corinne, and we'll be also co-hosting uh, to start with, and we will go on talking about all that, uh, the difference between... Um, uh, the veracity and the you know the capacity of knowing really who is talking when you bring them up. If you don't know them, if they have pseudos, that's also another another problem yeah. that radio stations had at the beginning. Uh, in the eighties, when they started, they 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 didn't know really who was talking. It was a lot of problems. Uh, so that's also another uh, point with the social audio: the possibility of having people saying things that we don't want them to say. Mm. I'm just I'm just wanting to check exactly how many minutes exactly from now are we starting this? Uh, it's uh, it's it's I think it's 48 minutes if I'm correct because Half it's past at, the hour 1430 yeah. Paris time 40, I believe 30 Paris time exactly yeah. exactly and it'll be on my Twitter account so if you yep. I'm the only Corin Podger in the world I've got such <laughs> a random name amazing. <laughs> Okay, so we have to go on to uh, the finish. There, you'll find, yeah, you'll find me easily. Well, listen, thank you so much. And thank Andy, you. thanks so much for moderating the session. It's really a pleasure to meet you and a real honor to be here with this uh, towards the end of the radio week. What a joy. Gosh. Thank you so much, Corinne. And uh, we'll join the after party in a couple of minutes. Remember, this and all the other sessions are available to watch or rewatch on remoteradioweek.org. That's remoteradioweek.org. Bye.